In the Shadow of Du Bois, Afro-Modern Political Thought in America is the name of the book, published by the University of Harvard Press. The author is University of Chicago Professor Robert Gooding Williams. Professor Gooding Williams, why in the shadow of Du Bois? Well, because Du Bois has been so uh, enormously uh, influential on African American political thought uh, and on Gen more generally speaking, discourse about uh, public policy, about black identity, uh, relating to uh, a, a contemporary contemporary racial politics. What was the importance of Du Bois? Well, in, in, turn of the century, correct? Yeah. The turn so, of the, uh, so, so what the book what the book focuses on is 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 what what is perhaps Du Bois' best known book, The Souls of Black Folk, and no doubt his most influential uh, uh, book. But in many ways, uh, uh, not a uh, 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 well understood book. So part of the goal of the book is on one hand to reconstruct Du Bois's political thought. Uh, du Bois has been treated well by, by historians. Uh, you, you mentioned David Levering, Lewis biographers, uh, but not so well by political theorists, by political philosophers. So my idea was to uh, 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 treat Du Bois as a political philosopher. You know, bearing in mind that, 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 that when you begin to think about Du Bois, in that perspective, but you, you quickly see that Du Bois really is the preeminent uh, 20th century uh, a contributor to African American political thought. Uh, again, I come back to the influence uh, 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 idea, the idea that, that more than any other 20th century African American thinker, uh, Du Bois is the thought whose, Du Bois's thought is, has, 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 if you will kind of cast, you asked about the, the shadow motif, has cast a shadow over uh, other uh, thinking the other, uh, the thinking of other uh, 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 African American theorists, and, and, but more generally beyond beyond uh, the, the the beyond beyond just the world of African American political thought, just a, a shadow over thinking about anyone and everyone who's thought about uh, African American identity, black identity, public policy relating to the ghetto poor, and so forth and so on. So, part of the idea is that by going back to Du Bois and engaging Du Bois as political thought. We arrive at a clear understanding of some of the assumptions informing our own, uh, still our own thinking about, about many of these issues. In the last 110 years or so, uh, what practical effect has Du Bois had? Who would you, where is his lineage? Well, of course, I mean, Du Bois is one of the uh, 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 great inspirations of, of, the, of the civil rights movement. And uh, uh, I think it's as well known. Uh, du Bois's uh, death in, in Ghana was 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 announced uh, in '63, uh, and I used that uh, 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 during the march on Washington. And I used that uh, 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 Roger Wilkins's, I think, uh, 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 excuse me, Roy Wilkins's announcement of of, of uh, uh, Du Bois's death as a, as an epigraph uh, to the book. And he says there that if you want to, you know, if there's if there's one thinker, right, who's Whose, whose, whose thought overshadows both, both uh, who's, the, the movement, what's happening here today, it's, it's, it's Du Bois, and Du Bois just died. So, so there's a real connection between not only what's going on at the level of uh, contemporary writers, theorists, thinking about these issues, issues again having to do with identity, ghetto poverty, in the aftermath of Jim Crow, in the aftermath of segregation, the aftermath of Obama, but also uh, Du Bois has had an enormous uh, uh, impact on, 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 on activists dealing with these issues. What was his relationship, Professor, with Booker T. Washington? Well, that, of course, is, 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 is an important theme of the book and, and something that you know, has been talked about at great length in the, in the, in the literature. Also an important uh, motif when one, is, when, when one thinks about that, the history of, of, of both, again, activism and African-American political thought. Uh, du Bois devotes an entire chapter to, to Washington and the Souls of Black Folk. Washington, of course, was the most prominent, the most influential uh, African-American uh, political force at the time that Du Bois was writing the Souls of Black Folk. But Du Bois thought that really, and, and which, which is why Du Bois thought he needed to take Washington on and, and subject Washington's thought to, 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 to critique. So, I mean, to, to, to summarize, I mean, Washington thought that, uh, uh, African American social thought progress really required that uh, uh, African Americans develop the virtues appropriate to succeeding the capitalist marketplace, and that they could put aside the struggle for civil and political rights. Du Bois responds by saying, "Well, no, you can't put aside the struggle for civil and political rights." And it's, in essence, Du Bois argues against Washington that that uh, uh, 
there will be no success in the capitalist marketplace if African Americans don't win their civil and political rights. So you can't separate these two agendas. But there's a deeper issue that's, I think, often ignored, and that's uh, the, the issue, uh, issue relating to the struggle, the struggle over leadership. Who, you know, what, 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 what elite or what group of elites is going to uh, emerge as, as, as the leaders of the, of the, of the struggle for African American uh, equality? And the, and the way, one of the interesting things about the way in which Du Bois frames that third chapter is, uh, uh, is, 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 is that he positions both himself and Douglas with reference to Fred, excuse me, both himself and Washington with reference to Frederick Douglass. In other words, Du Bois is kind of, in, as, 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 so, as, as have so many African American thinkers, Du Bois is, 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 is pitching the contest between him and Washington with respect to the Exodus narrative. And, and, and in effect, what he's saying in this, in this chapter is, well, Look, the, the, the Moses of, Afri of the African American struggle, Frederick Douglass, uh, has passed away, right? And the question is, who's going to be the new leader? And Washington has emerged as a new leader. He's, he, du Bois says he's emerged as the new Joshua, right? He, he refers to him, of the, uh, uh, Washington as this Joshua born of man and God. But, 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 but as it turns out, Washington isn't the militant leader that Joshua was, the militant leader that it, the new Joshua should be. And, um, Du Bois is printing, presenting himself as the more appropriate uh, successor to Douglas, the more appropriate Joshua than uh, than, than he sees uh, uh, than, than, than he sees in, 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 in Washington. Well, that said, Professor, yeah. what was W. E. B. Du Bois's relationship with the larger white community around him? Well, of course, Du Bois was was, was very much involved, one of the founding members of the NAACP. Um, uh, I, the, one can talk about the larger white community in, in a number of different ways. Um, one can talk about Du Bois, uh, again, with respect to the Niagara Movement, the NAACP, uh, uh, with respect to African-American uh, 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 activism. The point that I try to stress is, 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 is what Du Bois was about intellectually. And I try to kind of open up the kind of space for thinking uh, uh, not only about Du Bois' engagements with and appropriations of uh, 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 contemporary American uh, thinkers, but to think too about, for example, his time uh, uh, in Germany. So, 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 so for example, uh, Du Bois is not only interesting because he was a student of, of, of Josiah Royce at Harvard, an American thinker, but he's also interesting because he was the student of Gustav Schmuller in Germany and because he was engaged with late 19th century German debates about the relationship between the human sciences and the natural sciences and whether we should think about race. Uh, in the perspective of the natural sciences or the human sciences. Or, for example, you know, Du Bois' very famous discussion of, 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 of double consciousness involves a, an important and interesting and complicated allusion to, I think, what probably his, his, his one, one of his favorite poems, uh, William Wordsworth's uh, uh, Intimations Ode. So we think about Du Bois and the larger white community. I guess what I want to stress is we're talking about not only Du Bois in relationship to uh, 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 white activists who were involved with Du Bois in, in, in founding the, 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 the NAACP. We're also talking about uh, uh, the, the intellectual horizon, not only, again, an American intellectual horizon, someone like kids like, 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 like Royce or Santiana who were intellectual on Du Bois. We're also talking about you know, Du Bois's wide range of reading, his engagements with Wordsworth, and, and very, very importantly, really, I think, profoundly neglected his, his engagement, again, with this late 19th century German debate. Knowing what you do about W.E.B. Du Bois, would he be surprised that in 2008 a black president was elected in the U.S.? That's interesting. Uh, uh, probably as much as anyone. Yeah, I think I think um, uh, I was surprised. I think lots of people were were were, were surprised when Obama was elected uh, president. I think that part of the reason that uh, uh, Du Bois uh, left the United States uh, uh, for uh, for Ghana was 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 his pessimism about race relations in in the United States. So. Uh, uh, given that pessimism, I, I think uh, if you, that if you'd asked Du Bois, you know, in the first decade of the, of, you know, of our century, would, 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 would we have an African American pre president? I, I, I mean, remember, du, du Bois dies even bef before 1964 Civil Rights Act has passed, before the 65 Act, before the Fair Housing Act of 68. He hadn't seen any of that. He hadn't seen the end of, of Jim Crow. So for him even to, to imagine the possibility of, of for him to imagine the possibility of, of an African-American president, I think it's almost unimaginable. 
Robert Gooding Williams, what do you teach here at the University of Chicago? Uh, I teach uh, political theory in the